Plasmids, the powerful genetic enhancements featured in the Bioshock games. Today we'll explore the lore and gameplay mechanics surrounding these abilities, covering all of the plasmids present in the first game, as well as a couple that didn't quite make it off the cutting room floor. Plasmids are a central element in the world and lore of Bioshock. They're genetically engineered substances that grant extraordinary abilities by modifying an individual's genetic code. These enhancements are a result of a scientific breakthrough made by Dr. Su Shong and Dr. Tenenbaum in the underwater city of Rapture. Dr. Su Shong, a leading geneticist, conducted groundbreaking research in Adam, a substance found in sea slugs inhabiting the underwater city. Adam was discovered to contain a unique stem cell-like property that could rewrite genetic code. Dr. Su Shong and Dr. Tenenbaum discovered that by extracting Adam from the sea slugs and refining it, they could create plasmids. Plasmids were the commercial product derived from Adam. They could be injected into a person's body and rewire their genetic makeup, granting them various superhuman abilities. These abilities range from shooting fire and lightning from their hands, to telekinesis, and even the power to control the minds of others. However, prolonged use of Adam and plasmids had severe side effects. The human body became addicted to Adam, causing physical and mental deterioration, leading to a condition known as splicing. This addiction created a social divide within Rapture, as citizens became obsessed with acquiring more Adam to enhance their abilities, resulting in violence and chaos. The creation and abuse of plasmids eventually led to the downfall of Rapture. The citizens became increasingly unstable and mutated, becoming known as splicers. The city descended into anarchy, with the remaining inhabitants fighting for survival amidst the ruins of the once great utopia. Which is when Jack arrived, needing the extraordinary abilities granted by these plasmids in order to progress through the treacherous city of Rapture and overcome its many challenges. Some plasmids are required to progress through the main storyline, while others are optional and can be obtained based on your preferences and exploration. So with all that out of the way, Let's get started with the very first plasmid you'll acquire after being asked Are you as good as my daddy, mister? Electrobolt. This versatile ability allows you to interact with electrical switches, stunning enemies, and temporarily disabling security devices. It's also extremely effective when paired with a body of water, as it electrifies and kills any splices that walk into it. Electrobolt remains a staple of your arsenal until the very end, thanks to its effectiveness and satisfying damage bonus it provides when paired with the wrench. Electro Bolt also has two additional upgrades that increase damage and stun duration. The next essential plasmid you'll encounter is Incinerate. This fiery ability is required to melt ice that will uncover new areas and secrets throughout Rapture, as well as instantly set in splices ablaze. It's also used to deal significant damage over time to fire vulnerable enemies such as the elusive Houdini Spicers, since they'll continue burning even after teleporting away. Incinerate has two upgrades, with each level increasing the power's base damage, as well as increasing the amount of time your assailant will remain ablaze. As you progress through the main story, you'll eventually encounter Telekinesis, the third and surprisingly final plasmid required to progress being the last power used to overcome obstacles and solve environmental puzzles. With this ability, you can catch items, manipulate objects, and clear a path to reach critical areas, including the room where you'll confront Dr. Steinman. So those three are all of the abilities required to progress to the end of the game, but Bioshock offers more than just these few mandatory plasmids to play with. There are several optional plasmids that provide unique tactical advantages and alternate ways to approach any situation. These optional plasmids are as follows. Enrage, which allows you to cause enemies to fight each other, turning the tables in your favour during intense situations where you may find yourself outnumbered. Winter Blast, granting the ability to freeze enemies and objects, which not only incapacitates foes for increasing lengths of time with each upgrade, but also provides tactical advantages, allowing you to shatter frozen enemies or use them as impromptu shields. Cyclone Trap, that offers additional crowd control capabilities. This optional plasmid is useful for setting up traps or manipulating enemy positions, giving you the upper hand in combat encounters. 
target dummy, which is used for diverting enemy attention. Insects form, they can be used to distract or damage foes. Security bullseye, for redirecting security systems against enemies. Hypnotize big daddy, which I'm, I'm sure you can't guess what that does. And sonic boom. Eh, <laughs> <laughs> sonic boom. <laughs> and sonic boom for repelling enemies and creating opportunities for tactical manoeuvres. So whether you stick with the essential plasmids, or venture out into the realm of optional abilities, Bioshock offers a wide range of choices to suit your playstyle and overcome the challenges of Rapture. There are however a few plasmids that aren't available in the first Bioshock game that were initially meant to be, but got removed quite late into development for various reasons. While there's undoubtedly tens of potential plasmids that were considered, we know about five specific ones that ended up being cut fairly late into development. These plasmids include Aggressor Irritant, Parasitic Healing, Sanctuary, Speed Booster, and Teleportation. Aggressor Irritant, or Splicer Irritant, can be seen in an early gameplay showcase narrated by Ken Levine. <laughs> Bioshock! The plasmid would serve a similar function to Enrage and Target Dummy, drawing aggro away from the player, though unlike Enrage, instead of turning the splices into your own personal white knight, willing to throw their lives away for you. Aggressor Irritant instead turns the affected splicer into a target, causing all other enemies in the area to immediately attack them. Parasitic Healing Parasitic Healing was a plasmid that existed in early versions of the game and was cut fairly late into development. It allowed the player to fire a concentrated burst of energy towards foes, inflicting damage while simultaneously restoring that health to the player. Similar to other plasmids, Parasitic Healing had three progressive stages of enhancement, which would increase damage done, as well as health gained. Specific types of spider splicer variations that possess the capability to use this particular plasmid would have also appeared, though they were cut along with the ability itself. Sanctuary would have created a protective bubble around the player, absorbing all damage for a limited time. This was useful in early versions of the game, where hacking was done in real time. When the game was changed to be paused while hacking, the developers felt that the plasmid no longer served any purpose, and ultimately removed it. Speed Booster, whose function is fairly self-explanatory, but I'll explain anyway, would allow the player to move at extreme speeds far beyond their natural ability. The specific reason for the plasmid being removed aren't known, but I think it's most likely due to exploits and game breaks made possible by using it. And finally we have Teleportation. This plasmid can be seen in the Hunting the Big Daddy demo trailer. It would have allowed Jack to teleport instantly from one area to another. This could be used to escape tough battles by quickly moving to another spot. To use it, Jack would mark a spot as the destination, and then teleport there when needed. Though putting down a new marker would replace the previous one. The plasmid was removed by the developers due to concerns about the impact on the scripted events within the game. They worried that it would disrupt the intended gameplay experience, where players could teleport out of areas such as the fisheries in Neptune's Bounty, or set a teleport marker at the Barthosphere station in Arcadia before certain events occurred effectively bypassing entire levels. Remnants of the cut power can be found in several places throughout the game, whether it be in the Houdini Splicer's ability to teleport, the advertisements found in the Fontaine Futuristics marketing department, or the unstable version of the plasmid that can be seen in the second game. And that concludes my coverage of all of the plasmids in the first Bioshock game. If you enjoyed the video, you can check out some of my other content on screen now, Please feel free to like, comment, subscribe and all that. Ta for now.